Ja, varsågod Björn. Yes, uh, and uh, thank you for the for the welcome. And uh, we'll start with some uh, some slides to give an introduction to to what we're gonna talk about. So I just uh, go on. I assume you see my presentation now with some nice pictures. Yes. Yes, that's good. So um, yes, yeah, so first of all, we'll be uh, five people uh, from Dips in this uh, this demo. Uh, it's uh, Shetty Jorgensen, who is the product owner for the Open EHR tooling and platform and uh, and things in, in DIPS. And also to Magne Steen Hagen, who is uh, one of the lead developers and uh, be, been with us for um, all the Open EHR journey. And uh, Morten will give some uh, demonstration about how we use uh, Open EHR within DIPS. So uh, he's kind of the application content, the super user uh, role that you uh, talk about. He, he, uh, he was a nurse before. And now we started to work in, in, in DIPS uh, and, and develop quite a lot of applications using the tooling that we will demonstrate during this session. Uh, Anna is uh, head of international business in Kernel. So, uh, so she will say some words about the DIPS Kernel uh, setup and, uh, and how, how we are. And then finally, it's, it's me. I've been with uh, within OpenHR for many years. Uh, uh, so uh, I will act as a newbie here uh, later in this uh, uh, session. So for this demonstration, uh, what we wanted to do was to kind of tell the, uh, the story about how we, we use OpenHR within Deep Arena. So we have been um, working on Open EHR since 2010-11, quite a long journey. Uh, so we wanted to use this opportunity to, to uh, demonstrate and show how we integrated Open EHR within uh, the whole solution, because we think that will be of interest for the ongoing process that you have to adopt and, uh, and acquire uh, Open EHR. So, uh, so that, that's kind of our overall uh, goal for this, uh, this uh, session. And uh, we put up uh, some agenda or journey through through the um, uh, presentation. So we'll first give a quick honor. We'll give a quick introduction about uh, the companies, um, and then we will look into the tooling. Uh, I will try to be the, the newbie to to show how we use the uh, the tooling to create uh, clinical components, which will be used uh, within Open EHR. Uh, now in the Deep Arena later in the demo, Shetil will <coughs> give you some introduction to Airstore, our Open EHR CDR, to show uh, something about AQL and the dashboard and so on. And then Morten will give a will um, give a brief uh, uh, demo about um, different applications using OpenEHR in Deep Arena. And he will, he will also show some more advanced uh, tooling about how we use uh, the tooling more, yeah, more advanced. Then. And finally, we will talk about the ETL approach that we have. So I hope that will be okay. And um, we'll try to, to uh, keep the time. So first, uh, Anna, if you can, go on and say something about the kernel setup. Absolutely, okay. Uh, and I won't spend too much time doing this because I know that everyone's excited about the demo itself, but I just want to provide a little bit of context um, uh, for this. Uh, so you can skip ahead to the next uh, slide. So kernel is the group company that owns um, or the largest uh, e-health group company in Norway. Um, DIPS is the main locomotive of um, the group, uh, our biggest company, uh, but we're also investing in and um, developing startups that are still pre-commercial, but that are quite complementary to the solution that DIPS provides. Uh, fairly new group company uh, that was actually established after DIPS was acquired by the current owner, uh, because we saw that we could create better synergies between the group companies. Um, through that establishment, which would be or will be important down the line for us. Um, you can skip ahead. Uh, we have uh, eight companies uh, working on developing uh, healthcare solutions uh, currently. Uh, there's a lot of collaboration going on between these companies and they're becoming more interconnected 
day by day. Dips, as you see in the center, is the main uh, and largest, oldest company that we have. Um, and we've kind of separated here uh, in terms of um, companies that you see in the light green that are addressing long-term care, municipal care, uh, dark blue representing companies that are delivering into um, specialist care or hospital care. Uh, we also have an analytics company that's still pre-commercial, but up and coming in yellow. Um, and then we have one that's kind of more on the side in the dark gray. Um, so all of these are starting to increasingly work together so that we can realize the ambition that we have in Norway and many places abroad as well, uh, of, of one citizen, one record, and ensure collaboration across the uh, continuum of care in the countries where we operate. Uh, and we're, we're very excited also to be able to, at some point, provide these solutions in other countries than just in Norway, because we see that we do have some of the best e-health tools available. Um, and also building more future ready software tools for the healthcare systems. Okay, I can go ahead and skip to the yes. next. Yeah. So um, it's only just quite recently that we've started focusing on um, international expansion for the companies in the group uh, portfolio. Um, this is a work in progress. Uh, we initially are looking at kind of standalone solutions that can more easily, easily be deployed in different healthcare systems. Um, and naturally, uh, Sweden is a close market in terms of both geographical proximity, but also in the way that it's structured. So it's a natural place for us to start looking. Uh, I think that's all I need to say for now. It's just to provide you guys with some context about um, dips, strengths, um, and the rest of our portfolio. Um, and if there are any questions, obviously feel free to ask those in the chat and I can reply to those after. Hmm. Perfect. So, and then I think we will move into the, uh, the demonstration and showing some uh, application and maybe move away from PowerPoint. So, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we'll first uh, give a quick introduction to some of the tooling and, and walk you through the process of a newbie kind of going into to using OpenEHR, doing modeling and, and uh, development. So, this, this process that we will show now is, is kind of more or less like the, the first introduction uh, course that we, we use with our customers, how to, how to set them up with, with the tooling and to use them, how they are kind of interconnected. But of course, we will not go uh, all the way into the, the details. So first of all, this this, this is well familiar, uh, I assume, uh, from the other presentation. So if you want to build a new, new clinical applications, you need to start with, uh, of course, the user story, what you need to do. But then it's it's the modeling, it's the archetypes, the templates, and the terminologies. <clears throat> These are kind of marked in gray here because uh, here we use, we, we don't provide our own tools for template archetype designer and so on, we use what's uh, what's present there. But then you go into to forms, queries, and and configuration for deployment. You have some DevOps uh, needs uh, where we have developed our own kind of package manager solution to make this uh, possible. We'll see how much we can uh, we can address this during the um, uh, session, and then finally you will you will you will install and set up your applications in the running system. So in DIPS, we have uh, different customers all around the, in, in Norway, and they have kind of different setups and how they, they do access control and so on. So you need to adopt uh, the solution for that. Together with our customers, we have also made a, a stairway to increasing complexity. So this has been, you, you know, kind of for, for the newbie, but also for what is kind of safe to do with the tooling. So you can start very, very uh, simple uh, in the first step, and you can move ahead to a full-blown uh, application with the process and this decision support. So what Morten will uh, demonstrate uh, later is, uh, is very advanced functionality, but still using the building blocks that we provide in the tooling. 
but you don't have to go all that way. You can create very, very simple kind of form-based solutions, which is very, very fast to develop using uh, this uh, local environment. So within um, uh, DIPS and DIPS Arena and the OpenEHR, uh, we have a few components which we used. So based on in, in the uh, in the back end, the OpenEHR CDR and the, the modeling uh, store where you put the forms and so on, uh, you can use a few components for timelines, for cards, for key features and uh, patients lists and so on to, to develop different kind of applications. And of course, yeah. Uh, we have open HR in the, the back end, the, uh, the CDR, but of course DIPS is a complete uh, system with also demographics and patient data and episode of cares and so on. So we have also um, connected them together to, make, to, to integrate the data with the total solution. So what's kind of interesting is then on the top, you can reuse these components to create an uh, user interfaces, applications, targeting wall, mobile, desktop, and we're also working on, on patient portals to make uh, data available and entry available for the, for the patients. And of course, external APIs, we have a lot of them being 30 years uh, plus in, in eHealth. We have covered uh, every kind of integration standard uh, across this, but that's more or less uh, coupled with the Deep Arena system. But let's walk through um, uh, some um, some demonstration then. Uh, so I will just close a few things here. So uh, so what I thought I would would do is uh, this. <laughs> This is also familiar for you, it should be. So this is the Norwegian CKM. Uh, but the reason why I, I showing you this now is because from the beginning of with OpenHR in DIPS, we had this uh, idea, of course, that content for uh, health and care uh, is, uh, is so wide and deep. So we need the customers to take uh, kind of responsibility for the data models. So this is why we have, um, um, cooperated with uh, the hospitals and the health regions in Norway to, to make the, uh, the CKM a very good place to start. So if I know very newbie and I wanted to make a, uh, a solution based on, for instance, this clinical frailty scale, uh, I would go to the CKM to read, read me up about uh, what's this all about. And then later I would go to um, some kind of um, uh, templating um, uh, solutions. Uh, so you could, for instance, use uh, the um, tooling from, from Better, which is uh, very good for this. Um, I hope this will uh, load now. And, uh, and here, of course, you can then create the, uh, the templates and uh, look into it. So here I prepared the uh, CFS uh, score. Uh, this is also kind of straightforward for all open EHR uh, solutions. And you can export this, this from here uh, as an operational template. And this is what we use within our tooling. So what we have found with this uh, application development is that you, you use quite a lot of time with the templating, the models, but that's still the minor part of, uh, of everything. So uh what's really important is to to understand and know the use cases uh and to to, to learn about how the clinic uh, clinicians work and what kind of data they operate on and this this take takes some time is our experience so we we use to work weekly or bi-weekly with uh, with the clients then to uh, to understand what they need but anyway you can export then the operational template and this is typically what we do and then we provide here this uh, aircraft studio, which is the, uh, I kind of call it the IDE, the integrated development environment, because uh, this, this tool is uh, developed uh, over the years based on our needs internally, and uh, it's now also provided for a, for a customer in a more lightweight uh, edition, but still the same, same features. So uh, this, is, this is from my, my work, work uh, space, so I have quite a lot of 
projects uh, here, but I prepared a new one for this uh, this demo. So here we can have the forms. So I can. Bjorn, you have an extremely high resolution screen. It looks like so it will be hard in the video to see this afterwards. Okay, let me try and to move it over to the other screen if that's uh, better. Um, Let me see. So that's the uh, Corona problem that everyone got is very, very high resolution uh, screens on the uh, home home office. So is this better? Yeah, that's better. Yes, that's a lot easier. Yeah, it's very small for me now, but uh, anyway, I will I will manage. So uh, yeah, so this is the uh, aircraft uh, studio uh, which we use uh, all day, day long. Uh, so we have the forms here, the list of uh, forms, uh, and we can use it to test uh, things. We have something that we call folder templates. Uh, it's uh, a way to develop templates over OpenEHR folders. Uh, you have uh, queries and you have archetypes and you have the uh, Wacom's, uh, which we'll show later, different concepts and um, uh, and here terminologies, if there are some uh, terminologies defined in the project. So anyway, so this is, uh, this is uh, something that we use uh, all the time and then being then a, a newbie, I would then start actually to create a form. So we also provide this uh, form designer uh, tool. The, the, the same thing as with uh, the studio. It's uh, something that we have developed over, over the years. It's uh, connected with the same workspace. So it's quite easy to, uh, to get up and, and, and running. And here you can see the, the templates. And given that I downloaded this, um, clinical frailty score, I can then start using that template and uh, most uh, users will then just drag it into the uh, canvas and have a, a user interface uh, for the solution. And you can go directly into the, uh, the, the preview. Uh, and of course, you can also change uh, languages. So I tried to find some uh, archetypes uh, translated into Swedish. It's not that many of them. So I hope you will uh, co come and uh, translate uh, all, the, all the archetypes as well. So there are more available in, in Swedish. But anyway, we can, we can um, export with different languages and change uh, language uh, on the fly if that's, uh, that's needed. So um, there are lots of kind of small features is you can do everything you know about um, layout things uh, to set up uh, how things should be di displayed uh, radio buttons uh, combo boxes and uh, split things into uh, rows and columns and and so on um, the format that we use use to store the form definition is um, the same as uh, better used a few years uh, ago. We started actually using the form builder, but we had to int integrate our, our own. So uh, yeah, and, and then I can, of course, uh, work on this uh, form until I'm finished and I can, uh, I can save it. And I will just give it a new name. Uh, there are some, some details here used to actually be uh, able to see who has been working on it and some uh, information and categories and so on. And then when I save it, I can go back here in uh, Aircraft Studio to, um, to uh, see how this form will, uh, will actually work. Uh, and uh, what's more kind of interested in it because this this form uh, building thing that that's one thing that's that's important but when you work on this and you make more advanced uh, logic inside uh, the form for bigger forms and so on you kind of want to look what's happening behind so we have ha here the possibility to uh, to look into the composition generated in different uh, formats 
And we can use this uh, quite a lot to see, given what I've selected in the form right now, this is the data that will be provided from the form itself. And we can also do different uh, testing here, like uh, round trip solutions. So if you in, in the end system, actually you, you cannot approve, you cannot finish what you've been working on, you need to store it for later. You will then pick it up and work further on it. This is this kind of simulate that uh, that round trip uh, functionality, and then you can go in and see that well now there are more fields because now uh, more of the mandatory fields from OpenHR is populated, so I can then switch back back and forth uh, doing this. And we also have some some modes for the form rendering, uh, which we can select here. So I also prepared this uh, uh, score uh, before. So I will also here, the form render that I is that, that I'm showing right now is the VPF one used within our desktop uh, client. So the first client, Tips Arena, was based on VPF, uh, Windows Presentation Foundation. Uh, so we have this form under over many years, but we are also now working on this new uh, web-based uh, render. So this is the web render on the same form definition with some, some functionality here to make it more uh, 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 better to use with mobile devices and so on, which Morten will show you later in, in a real-time solution. So, but this is a very, very powerful uh, thing to be able to create one uh, form definition with all the logic and then uh, be able to, to um, deploy it into different uh, hosts, mobile, wall, web, desktop, and so on. Um, What's uh, so? This is kind of the, the first overall introduction. There are lots of details here. We we typically tend to use you know uh, starting with a new customer, uh, maybe two full day sessions to go into to all of the details, and then um, most of the customers will be able to start actually develop their own solutions, form based solutions and AQL and so on themselves after this uh, uh, two days uh, initial setup. And we don't have time for that uh, today. Um, I think so this is a quick introduction to the tooling things. And then I would like uh, if you, Kjetil, can um, introduce the, the backend, the air store and the functionality uh, there. Before Morten later will give a demonstration about uh, features. Yeah, sure. Uh, can you hear me? Everyone? Yeah. yeah. Um, and can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Um, as Bjorn said um, earlier, my name is Chet uh, Lerinsen. I'm the product owner of uh, the OpenHR uh, solution in, in DIPS. Um, I've been working with uh, OpenHR for about 12 years now. Started as a developer and the last few years been working as a product owner. Um, I'm going to give you a short uh, introduction into our uh, CDR uh, OpenHR based backend, uh, which we call EHR Store or Air Store. Uh, Air Store is a uh, uh, a service with a REST-based API, which uh, uh, the main functionality is, is storing uh, compositions, uh, querying, and also some uh, functionalities for uh, storing resources such as uh, templates and forms and uh, stored queries. Uh, I'm just going to give you a short walkthrough of the functionalities in this. Uh, what you see on the screen now is our uh, administration dashboard, uh, which is a, a simple web application built on top of our backend. Uh, we use this a lot, uh, both in when developing solutions, but also uh, for monitoring uh, the services in production. And 
en uh, debugging. Um, the uh, Airstore service uh, uses um, Apache Solar uh, as an index uh, for for ATL and um, uh, we use internally uh, in DIPS, we use um, Oracle as a uh, database. Uh, what you see here is the, the main dashboard, which gives a short overview of the, the state of our uh, CDR. Uh, you can see how many compositions that's been stored, uh, how many EHRs or end folders. You can see some monitoring of, of the load at this moment, how um, much uh, is cached and uh, how many queries and indices is done. Um, you also, here you can see that everything is green. Uh, since we use an external index, it's very important that our database and index are in sync. If for some reason the uh, index goes down or something uh, is stuck, so some transactions may be stuck, they will come, become out of sync and then you will get uh, notifications in this dashboard in those cases. Um, we uh, we have the functionality to do some uh, basic operations like rebuilding our external index and uh, rebuilding something we call our instruction state, which is a separate index used for uh, enabling querying uh, states of uh, instructions. Uh, but this is the dashboard where you kind of rebuild uh, those indexes and see uh, see the progress of those indexes. The typical rebuild uh, in uh, of an index uh, at, for instance, uh, Oslo University hospitals with, I think about now it's about 10 million uh, compositions is uh, about 50 minutes to an hour. So here you, we will you would see then the, the progress. Uh, we have some uh, a login where you uh, can see uh, errors and exceptions with some detailed reception messages. Uh, uh, if there are uh, uh, AQL queries, for instance, that's failed, you can see uh, what's the query and you can then take that over I assume to the, the as you trained the uh, AQL uh, uh, guy will uh, will see what's what's wrong with this this query uh, <laughs> immediately. Of course. So um, and also one of the uh, Parts of the, the admin view that's mostly used is the the data explorer. explorer. We use this uh, both for when we develop for testing HTML queries and uh, also for uh, for uh, debugging uh, in in production. So uh, this is basically a, a, a tool for running. Yeah, running uh, AQL queries. Uh, so uh, as we, we, uh, the, we support uh, AQL with most of the, uh, if not all of the uh, standard functions, but also we have added some, both uh, some functions uh, and some extra functionality on top of AQL. Um, if you, you there are um, early in our uh, HL or open HR journey, one of the first um, 
obstacles we, we encountered when, when implementing or, or started using AQL was the lack of support for good grouping within AQL. A typical use case for that is you have a list of several patients and you want to get the latest, uh, latest in this case, body weight, for instance, for each person. Uh, there is no uh, good way of doing that within uh, 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 basic AQL other than first extracting all the data and then grouping the data uh, post querying. Um, in order to get sufficient uh, performance on this, we uh, implemented uh, support for something we call partitioning of the result. Uh, basically, you're able to uh, take a standard AQL query and say, that I want to partition the result by a patient ID. I want the first uh, one item per participation or per, uh, partition. And I want to scope the results to these IDs. So by running this, I will get the result set that's uh, finished grouped. Uh, by patient ID. So uh, this is a functionality that's uh, commonly used for for list queries, where we want to, uh, for large sets of patients, want to extract uh, lots of data, but uh, uh, partitioned either by patient or in some cases by by an uh, encounter or uh, referrer. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's it for now. Um, yes. uh, so yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then we can go back to questions if there are some later. So and then we will mm. we'll move, move over into to Morten, uh, which uh, will um, give a few examples on how OpenHR used within the, the system. How uh, we actually have utilized all the uh, the tooling and the uh, the platform things to make a real thing for end users. Okay, I'll just share my screen. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Okay, can everybody see something that's uh, not explored? <laughs> well. Uh... What we are looking at, uh, I'll just start with introducing myself actually. Uh, my name is Morten and I'm a nurse and I'm also a self-taught uh, IT nerd and I work at DIPS and I've been working here for five years. And uh, my job is creating uh, the user end products by using all the tools that uh, Kjetil and Björn has just uh, introduced. <laughs> Uh, so I will try to take you through uh, somewhat of a medical uh, use case. It's not a very strict use case. So if there are other people here who are doctors and nurses, don't shoot me if I use the wrong uh, values or stuff like that. Uh, and I will also just want to say that uh, this will probably be a, be a bit overwhelming because we are using a lot of, as a, nobody, I think nobody of you has seen Dips Arena. So it might be a little bit uh, jumpy when I jump around, but I will try to explain as we as we go around. Uh, what you see on screen now is uh, on our top left corner, we had a RFI demo, uh, and that's the name of our patient. And uh, this is just a demo patient. And in this uh, demo environment, there's a lot of different uh, demo patients with uh, some have very weird data. Uh, but this woman is 100 years old. Uh, what we see on uh, beneath there is a patient list. So this patient list has uh, actually just been delivered to Helsingfors in Norway. This is an uh, acute and emergency list. So this shows all the active patients. Each line is a different patient, which has been put, uh, which uh, is uh, admitted to the ward acute mutaket and the department for surgical uh, surgical department. So 
Uh, what we see uh, in the list itself, it's a combination of data, which is coming from the patient, patient administrative uh, uh, part of DIPS, for example, the name and stuff like that. Uh, but a lot of the columns here are based on AQL and vacuum. Uh, just to just short thing about that is that we use the AQL to uh, query the data on the patients, and we use uh, vacuum as a as a work of as a format expression. So that's how we uh, take the data that we collect and then transform it to something. For example, uh, in the triage column here, we uh, I'll come a bit in detail, but we collect, for example, if the patient has a triage set or not, and what the triage value is. And that's when we present the colors, the time, and stuff like that. Uh, the patient we are on now, Aref Ide, uh, she's down here. Uh, and I would just press a button here just to filter her out so it's easier to see what happens. She has been categorized here as a pre-hospital triage at uh, 1301, and it was estimated that she would uh, arrive at 1352. These are all correct, collected from a, st a structured uh, data input. And I'm dragging in from our left here is a patient-specific page. So this patient-specific page is made purely or to optimally to show uh, to use in an emergency room. And what we see here is that we see the pre-hospital value has been filled in. And that's this is an example of a component that we use that queries the open EHR data and checks if there is a composition there and so on and so on. Uh, and for people who are not, is not familiar with an emergency room, uh, you usually uh, get triaged when you get inside an emergency room. And that's basically a queue system for who's getting seen first. And I will now press this button here at Mutok. Uh, and what this uh, will open is uh, it will open a form that looks like, so say I'll take away this video. It will open a reception form, uh, which has quite a lot of logic built in. And this is uh, a more advanced uh, for, for, um, form of a form. Uh, everything you see here is based on open EHR. Uh, so uh, even though uh, some of these uh, fields are a lot of free text, it is, is still what we call semi-structured. So that you either you use uh, approved archetypes, for example, uh, clinical synopsis and so forth, or we use, uh, for example, in the cases where we use free text, we also add usually add uh, some sort of uh, cluster to define by use uh, so by defining a code that actually defines what the uh, free text is, so that you have some sort of structure around even the free text. The first thing we see here is that some data already is filled in. Uh, the clinical uh, uh, clinical reason for contact that's collected from uh, our uh, patient administrative uh, form because they say why the patient is being admitted. But uh, here down here we see a reuse arrow. This indicates that the data, the open EHR data, is used from somewhere else. So if I were a medical practitioner now and wanted to check the source, for example, for the information, I will come be sent back to the form, which was actually filled out uh, as a pre-hospital triage. So now I see that this, uh, this one has been collected from uh, the former form and into here. So just that's just one simple example of reuse. And that could have been a blood pressure or similar. I then press next, and then I come to the next part of the form. Uh, the point that we have making this form is that you have uh, a collection of logic and screening and the decision support in one single place here, which is uh, put together in a logical way for an emergency room. Uh, a good example, which I think everybody or a lot of people know is that News 2, for example, uh, in a lot of emergency room, you would like to have a baseline used to for the patient before they pass further on into the hospital. So uh, we have um, uh, created it so that this will be calculated uh, automatically. So I'll just go through the form and then I'll uh, show you later uh, a bit of the logic. So uh, our patient has a quick respiratory rate. 
uh, on normal SpO2. Breathe room air. Pulse frequency is a bit high. Uh, it's got a low blood pressure and got a bit of a fever, quite high fever. Normal GCS. So uh, what I have filled into the form is only values who are completely uh, normal or to use on every patient usually in an emergency room. So I haven't uh, added any in, in new data that the, uh, that the clinicians usually doesn't uh, put in, but I still get a lot of uh, decision support out of it. So on our right side, the news two has now been calculated and it shows the deviation values here. And it also shows what you should do since the patient has a high clinical risk. It's also calculated the GCS here, as you see. And we also at the top here, we got a blue box that says, uh, be careful uh, because uh, the values you have put in to the form might indicate uh, that the patient is uh, in danger of uh, developing sep sepsis based on what you have filled in. Uh, we don't, uh, and the thing is that they have to then think twice uh, and should check what, twice if the patient might have an infected toe or finger or whatever. When you then press the infection button, we now do a QSOFA score as well. So that has been done based on the values to have put in. Uh, we also have a CRB uh, 65. That's uh, in the case of uh, uh, community acquired pneumonia, for example, that can be calculated directly in the form. Uh, so all everything in this form is structured data and stored as structured data. Uh, on the bottom here, we got a clinical synopsis that's based on, uh, on the form itself. So we create, this is just a prototype just in the bottom here, so the text might be a bit weird, but uh, what we do is that we take all the, all the structured data and convert it to a more readable format because we have seen in almost every project we have that uh, by showing structured uh, documents, it's very hard to read for a clinician who isn't used to filling out the document itself. So here we get structure and we also get the free text that makes it e easier to read and also easier to send out, for example, to, uh, to their, their home doctor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's also, of course, since this is a reception and this is the triage also, you can set here red, orange, uh, yellow, green, and blue. We'll put this patient to uh, orange. It was green. And we also can define what kind of Manchester score uh, form we are using. Uh, so the, the thing is here also is that even though we say that this is the Manchester triage scale, it's not a complete manual. So you still have to do the manual work on checking through the forms on the outside, but you can put the results in here. Uh, and that's also an interesting thing because why do we know that this is Manchester triage score? Well, that's because in almost all of our forms, we also put a few values in the back that the, re that the user themselves doesn't see, but we see it in the information model. And that is, it makes it possible for us to pull out data and for example, check if uh, the triage score system used was Manchester or Rex, for example. Uh, I'll now approve this form. Uh, and what will happen now? Let's see. We had a bit of hiccups today in this environment. So, but yeah. Uh, what we now see is uh, the image in front of us here. We have in the triage here. This is a component that shows uh, that we can configure to show almost any kind of open EHR data. So here we can see that uh, the orange value from the, on the down, down here, the orange value from the form we just filled in. Uh, in the middle here, we see a full scale of the entire uh, form. And this is a page that's specifically, specifically designed for the A&E and that's why it's set up this way. We also see the new score here. And in our patient list, we now see, let's see, I gotta do a bit of a refresh here. We see that the patient has gotten a 15, a 1350 and set to an orange triage and should be seen within uh, some sort of as a one minute or two minutes. And this will count down. And that's also 
an example of us using AQL and a vacuum to give a format expression that gives meaning. Uh, so now I will jump from this to this. This is Dip's wall. And I think that's quite, uh, Bjorn said it once, but I think it's very, very uh, important to say it again. And that is the, uh, the way we have designed a uh, wall, which is this, which is uh, an application to show our patients list basically on a large screen. You can have a touch screen and all of that. And our mobile device and our desktop, desktop app application uses the same configurations over the forms. Uh, and the AQL and the vacuum. So that means that we can produce, if you take a basic example, we can create a new score today, uh, create a form, create a uh, vacuum, a format expression that goes into a patient list, and we can deliver that to all the platforms in a running environment. And that's quite, uh, quite, quite an important thing. Uh, so this is the same list here that we uh, saw in uh, in Arena, and we see our patient up here, RF uh, RF demo, and just to show that you can do registrations here, I'll just need to quickly sign in. In here, there. Uh, and it's the same columns. I will now open the. Let's see here, the doctors, doctors, uh, or, uh, yeah, when the doctor sees the patient and they want to know that they have seen the patient, I've seen the patient because of the triage, I might have a comment, for example, I have seen the patient and I decide on some sort of uh, treatment sending the patient to the ward there. And when I approve now, you will, uh, you will see some logic happening in our first column again, because they, they're connected because of the structured data. So now we see that the timing here has been removed and that indicates for the personnel that this patient has been seen, but it still keeps its original triage category because you still want to know what the triage category of the patient was. And you can also do retriage and so on. So uh, now we'll just go uh, back as a forward in our story and let's pretend that we're sending our patient to the ward itself. Uh, I will now change to another patient list. Uh, this patient list is uh, an example list of uh, something we call the Trigarena or safe EHR. Uh, and this is a product purely based on open EHR. Uh, which uh, contains a lot of uh, risk scores and follow-up opportunities to document. I will have a focus on nutrition in this case. Uh, so on top here, we have our RFE, the demo uh, person, uh, woman. Uh, and you see here, this is the new score. We see the Q sofa actually here, that this patient has triggered a Q sofa. Uh, and we also see here in the nutrition. Uh, in the nutrition here, we see that there has not been done any kind of screening. Uh, I'll just go down here and you see the different icons. This is also then an expression of our format expression where we evaluate data on each patient. So the reds, for example, have a high degree, a high risk of being in uh, of, of malnutrition or under, yeah, malnutrition. And here is a weight icon that shows that the patient is, uh, uh, for example, in a high risk, but hasn't been weighed for the last two weeks, which, which might indicate that there's a problem. And now I'll just quickly let's try and jump to my uh, cell phone here. Let's see. Uh, no, not the camera. Share uh, screen there. Okay. Uh, oh, I have, of course, been logged out. Jeez. Yeah, I've been auto logged out, logged out, so then we won't do that. And then we'll just quickly go back. Sorry about that. 
what I was about to show is that we can do the NRS two 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 screen on the, on the device itself. But I see I don't have a lot of time left, so I think we'll just drop. I think it's it. okay, Morten. They they can yeah. trust us that this is working. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what we then will do is that we go into uh, Arena again, and I just want to open the Singapore's list here again, so we have the same list. And I'll filter out our patient. So then we'll press the nutritional column here. And we will get, uh, this is the NRS 2002. And I will just quickly fill in uh, some data here because I really want to show my last form. And what we see here is that when we come down here, some of the values has all been already been filled in. And that's because we then qualify because we have calculated, for example, the BMI here. So you save a few clicks uh, there and then there. And when we press approve here, we will get there. You see the patient list uh, changes here. So we have now the nutritional risk value. And you also have here that the patient should have an individual plan for nutrition and so on. If we then press here, we will now get for ex an example of a very complex document, which has a lot of decision support. So this actually uh, helps you calculate and estimate what kind of problem diagnosis that you qualify to in ICDT, and it will automatically put it into the uh, medical codes of the patient. It will also uh, alert you if the patient is in risk of for example, re-nutritional syndrome and so on. I'll just fill in a bit here. And for the final step here that I wanted to show you guys is that uh, down here, we also have an example where we have built, uh, where we use, for example, an instruction uh, and then a, a way of formatting our, so using the information model that our system then recognizes and orders actually uh, uh, nutritional uh, dietitian uh, that will can uh, get their own patient list and then you can start building their journal in their uh, they have their own trajectory tra trajectory that they can follow up and then i'll uh, actually i think i'll stop there but uh, in our environment and go back to the ehr okay. Yes, I'm uh, just sorry. Um, uh, so I think uh, just uh, bring back uh, Arena if you would like. Uh, so uh, so there are lots of you know lots of functionality feature clinical feature uh, going on here uh, in what Morten said, and uh, you kind of need need a context to also understand how thing thing works together. But uh, for me, this is kind of the beauty of Open EHR. Uh, we had developed you know the tooling and the platform and everything, and Morten started working in our company. Uh, coming from the uh, emergency ward at uh, one of the hospitals in in Norway, very interested in in this about the triage and the uh, the news and that kind of thing. Started develop things using the tools, the queries and the functionality. And you know there is a really advanced applications uh, application which is possible to to develop them using the tools. And and this also very interesting because you can then deploy. Uh, the applications in a running system without a, a big update. Mm -hmm. And also the data are collected, as you see here, the, the height and weight and, uh, and this kind of things that's needed across every application is immediately shared uh, with other applications. And also, you know, you, new research and new user interfaces and, and that kind of thing. So this kind of really uh, illustrates how <laughs> how well suited open EHR are, are to develop these kind of uh, solutions. So uh, uh, I think we're kind of running out of time, but um, uh, there are some advanced things going on within the, the form. So uh, what we would like to do now, Martin, is to kind of look into some of the new stuff that you have been working on regarding the nutrition things to see how how things can be be utilized even more to to be able to build uh, quite complex uh, applications within forms. Mm. So just a few minutes on this, and then we can can move along. Yeah, 
I'll just quickly say something about it. Well, the nutritional status, uh, when you have a patient who's in a high risk, that usually uh, qualifies to have some sort of, you can call it what you want, the trajectory or a treatment plan or something like that. And food intake is one of those things. And this is the latest thing that I've actually been working on. That's why something's in, also in English here. And this is a quite complex uh, form as well, uh, but it's complex in a little bit a different way because the other has decision support. This has a lot of calculations. So what we can do now is that uh, we have set it up and this is of course just test data. So uh, on the first, first uh, part here, uh, the nutritional dietitian in the hospital can define their own uh, combined products. For example, uh, one, uh, one piece of bread, two slices of ham, and make a menu object, if you call it that. And they can also define in, uh, in our uh, admin user, user interface, they can define how many calories their, uh, their menu item is, how many uh, parts fat, how many grams of one another, and they can define... Uh, I think it's almost 52 different parts of a meal. So it's quite a detailed detail, detailed uh, registration that you can do. But the interesting thing is there is that the registration itself for the nurse isn't any more complex. So if I'm the nurse now, I can say that the piece, uh, person ate two portions of uh, this food item. Uh, I can also do a search against the data, uh, the data set that is about 2,500 uh, different uh, types of food that's defined by a Matvare portal uh, in Norway, which is a government, uh, government or a webpage. Uh, and what we see down here is that we got a calculation of the entire, so entire uh, nutritional value of the product. And we can also, if you want to, for a very special interest uh, users, you can show a complete nutritional calculation of the meal. And here we calculate all the vitamins, minerals, fatty acid down to a level that even my wife who's a nutritionist didn't really uh, all recognize all of them. So, and this is an example where we do some relatively advanced thing for being inside a form uh, without increasing the complexity for the user. Yeah. And I think I'll end it at that uh, Bjorn. Yeah, that's very good. And uh, and also, so what you use to develop this kind of uh, advanced uh, logic uh, is then the JavaScript API, which we have uh, behind the, the form. Yeah. So we also provided uh, on, on GitHub uh, the API as a TypeScript uh, definition for those who might be interested in this. So yeah, there could be, as I said earlier, lots of... Uh, we, we could use this uh, with all, within all the feature here. Uh, what we would like to do now is to move over and into looking at the ETL uh, part that we have been working on for the last uh, last few years. So it's uh, Kjetil who will um, uh, introduce uh, this, but uh, I, I think I might start it uh, up just to, since I am the newbie uh, here. So I will try to uh, share my screen again. So, you know, given that I was this newbie, very interested in, share, in the clinical frailty scale. And you can see my screen now, right? Which one with the black? No. Aircraft studio. Aircraft studio, sorry, I have two screens, two, two, one too many. <laughs> So, um, yes, uh, you remember from the beginning, I created this, uh, this form with the clinical frailty scale. This is, of course, very, very, very simple uh, archetype, but, uh, but for the purpose, it's, it's fine. So, and, and given that, well, now I wanted to have some kind of uh, a report, uh, some kind of, you know, looking into data uh, of the clinical frailty scale. So given the form, we have here some uh, AQL generator, which I can create on a, a full, uh, full uh, definition. So uh, most of the time you would just uh, generate it and, uh, and use it out of the, uh, the box. Uh, so 
Kjetil will later go into some of the details about this annotated AQL that we have. But since I am the, the kind of newbie, I will just be interested in you know, looking at the data. So I can also then create the AQL uh, output here. And, and for now, I will just uh, remove the first uh, query. I will just run it. So, and what you see here now is, you know, kind of auto-generated AQL, uh, and I can then query into this selected um, data source up here. Uh, we have support for different kind of servers. So, as you can see here, we can uh, we can go directly to uh, an open EHR API as so. Uh, the ER store, and we also uh, had support for for better uh, when they used the uh, the previous SOAP uh, API, and and so on. So we can have different uh, kind of data sources, and then run the queries, and you can look into the data provided. So this is something that we use quite a lot in the uh, development phase, of course, to to look at how the data is uh, stored, how the queries work. Uh, looking into different problems with AQL to handle them, uh, about repeating solutions and so on. And then you can use this to go into the vacuum definitions, which Morten provided, uh, demonstrated, you know, with uh, the red, yellow and green warning and so on, or then into the uh, ETL definition. So we can both do queries, of course, directly into the, the CDR using AQL. But for many of the kind of more advanced reporting features, you would like to combine more data, uh, and then we find that SQL is a more uh, is a more attractive uh, case. So, given now that I have kind of developed this uh, ETL definition, uh, Chetil we now introduce to the ETL service and the workbench there to to show you some of the features there. Uh, yeah, thank you, Bjorn. Um, uh, as uh, Bjorn mentioned, uh, we have support, uh, or we have created something we call uh, the uh, OpenEHR ETL service, uh, which is a service that's on the outside of our CDR, CDR but uh, basically it's a way of extracting compositions on a hierarchical uh, format and uh, uh, transforming it into, in our case here, into a relational database. Uh, this is used to, uh, we use this a lot to uh, extract open EHR data, EHR data into our data mart so that we can utilize all of the uh, uh, toolings over our data mart and combining open EHR data with non open EHR data. Um, the, the basis for what we call an ETL definition, which is one single extract, is what Bjorn called the uh, uh, an AQL or an ETL definition, which is uh, based on AQL but with some annotations where, which is used to uh, uh, add metadata to the definitions and tell it how to uh, transform this into uh, normal database tables. So based on this uh, single definitions like this, uh, we can go into the uh, open air ETL dashboard and we can add uh, this definition. Uh, adding definitions this way is something that's only used while uh, testing and developing. In, in production, these definitions are being deployed as resources and being installed. Uh, this is more of a as you see, a workbench for developing. But uh, I can uh, add this definition, I can save it. And what we see here is uh, it's been added as a new uh, process. And based on this, we have uh, created a definition, we have created a database table or a schema, 
uh, tables and queues and everything else that needed for uh, for this to be populated uh, when uh, uh, open air start ESR data is being stored. So based on th this definition, we uh, get a table looking something like this into our um, uh, our data mart. And if I wanted to test this, I can uh, get a uh, an example composition. Then we see that the values being that will be extracted into a database table. Uh, this is, uh, of course, just a, a simple exam example where you only have one level in the hierarchy being uh, transformed into one table. But uh, this can be used for, for advanced uh, transformations where you have a single composition or single part of a composition you want to uh, extract into multiple tables where uh, different levels in the hierarchy becomes different tables. Uh, we use this uh, mechanism, this ETL service, now only for our uh, data mart, but uh, we see a lot of potential in this approach of uh, also transforming into other formats. For instance, uh, doing extracts uh, to uh, directly into uh, files on disk or Excel or other data uh, data sources. So uh, uh, that was just a really quick overview of our ETL tools. Um, how are we on time, Bjorn? So uh, we are quite okay. I, uh, yeah. I think uh, I uh, think we have the uh, until uh, three o'clock for the total uh, session, and uh, we could go into the questions and answers, and maybe come back to some of the, uh, the parts that we have demonstrated. Yep. Yeah. So I assume there has been too much information in too short time but uh, anyway it's uh, it's it's a big, big 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 system lots of lots of components to actually be able to uh, you, you know uh, support the hospital uh, needs uh, do you want me to read the questions uh, aloud or or are you taking care of it yeah. i can i can maybe i can bring up my document where i kind of uh, wrote yeah. Uh, copy and paste it. If I try, if I like uh, this, yes. Mm -hmm. So this, these are questions. Maybe we could go uh, go backward uh, since. Uh, sorry, I just need to bring back your. Uh, uh, okay, come on. So I can see you. I'm sorry. No. Uh, the last uh, last questions uh, came up, and also the tenth uh, here. Uh, but uh, the number nine, uh, supporting change data capture, or are they more batch oriented? Are you dependent on features on the Oracle DB to deliver this? I think uh, Kjetil and or Magne, I guess you are the best to uh, answer on this. Yeah, uh, at the moment we are, we, we support uh, uh, change data capture, which means that uh, uh, data is being pushed into the data mart on change. Uh, um, we uh, currently use uh, uh, Tomorna. We use some uh, Oracle queues. Uh, I mean, we don't use any Oracle queues or anything like a specific uh, features that we need to uh, from the Oracle database. We use. Uh, other mechanisms for queues, uh, but uh, generally we're using just like the traditional 
uh, functionality of the database, no uh, specific uh, um, functionality outside the normal um, features of a base installation. I don't know if that answers your question, Shadar. Yeah, the chosen was, uh, are we dependent on features on the Oracle, uh, Oracle database to deliver this? Yeah. Um, and yes, this, uh, the answer is no. The, the answer is no. We generate the SQLs for our, uh, from the server. So basically, um, it's like um, we're using the database as a normal user. So the answer is no. So I think maybe that's also uh, kind of related to uh, some, some other questions here about how um, the, the, the open HR components tooling service can be run outside of uh, Dips Arena. So because uh, when we started using open HR within Dips, uh, we, we made a decision to have it as some kind of external component. And the beginning we used uh, an open EHR CDR backend from another vendor. It was uh, Marant at that time, but we developed our own to support uh, more of our needs related to this population query based things and uh, yeah, things that we, we, we needed. But uh, we have always tried to, to develop it as standalone components and then integrate it into the system. So regarding the ETL, so currently it's it's run within the, the total system and it's also change data capture because we need to also have changes from you know the patient demographics and so on to actually be able to acquire across uh, domains in that system but this this things that's specific to uh, open ehr could be run outside of of uh, that environment and uh, we are not dependent on oracle db but that's what we have developed for since we're using that within the system uh, and this also goes for the uh, the kind of the the, the re-indexing uh, feature question number uh, eight. Um, so um, the, since the primary currently the primary uh, storage for EHR data is within the Dips uh, EHR uh, system in Dips Arena, but uh, the Open EHR data is then indexed out to the Open EHR CDR. So, uh, which means that we can uh, deploy quite new <laughs> uh, upgrades on it and then re-index based on the, the primary source. And this could actually be a, a feature uh, that could support any kind of um, master system. It's not only DIPS, but it could be any master system which has uh, legacy data kind of, and you want to export it and re-index the, uh, the open EHR CDR backend. So the re-indexing is about uh, yeah, then, then rebuilding the open EHR uh, system when, uh, when needed. And question seven, if you can re-index while system is running, yes, uh, that's, uh, that's possible. And question six was about uh, uh, most information must be archived at some point. Uh, and if it's possible to, to export the information in, uh, in an example given XML. So, and then currently, uh, as I said, the open EHR data within Dips Arena is stored as canonical XML uh, form. So of course that's exportable. Uh, running the system at hospitals in Norway, we have this national archive where you at some point in time when the patient has have been dead for some, some time need to export data into this uh, central archive. So we have that kind of feature. Uh, but for the open EHR CDR, we don't have this kind of bulk export uh, feature built, built in. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm not sure how to, uh, to reply to number five there, but uh, as I said during the, the demo, so uh, when you build the form definitions, uh, it goes into some kind of form definition, which is a JSON uh, structure today. And we have been developing on the same uh, definition that uh, Better used uh, many years ago, but we haven't cooperated with them lately. We have also suggested that this kind of form definition format should be 
add the, the to open EHR as a specification or as something like that. So other vendors can, can use the same specification and then provide builder functionality, uh, providing the same you know, definition format, or even provide their own renders based on the same definition. So uh, there, are, there are nothing special about that kind of the, the archive uh, with the form definitions, uh, which could be used, of course, after ending the, the contract. Do you know yeah. anything about uh, this open sourcing of the form specification, when that might happen? No, it's, it's, it's far uh, in the future or soon or? So that could be addressed in two ways, the, the question there, because you have on one side this kind of the open source, the specification of the form definition. And this was something that I um, gave input to for the, um, the specification group in OpenEHR a few years ago. It hasn't been that much activity on that lately. There have been other things uh, that has had the focus. But uh, this, I think, I think, um, you know, the, the current situation of open HR in Europe and globally, uh, I think this is something that could have been looked at, but that's not up, uh, up to me or, or us. Uh, we well, also I could, sorry, could I mention around this number five here, one of the questions is, rather, if we built a web application, for example, using your web renderer, uh, then, of course, it's very nice that we can uh, take the form definitions and such, but uh, can we keep using the web renderer for a while? Let's say we've built 50 applications and we end the contract. Will all the 50 applications that we've built die at once? Or could we keep them running in, in a non-changing mode for a couple of years while we change form rendering to something else? That would be a very nice vendor lock-in if we close down everything when we close the... Yeah, well, and some uh, contracts uh, seem to do that. So the uh, question is about that. <laughs> so no, I think, uh, you know, uh, we haven't made an agreement, but I think uh, the, the most normal case is that you, you keep using uh, the software, but you don't get any updates uh, on it. So we have uh, Deep Salas and another system running in Denmark actually uh, for multimedia purposes. And we, we stopped uh, the contract there a few years ago, but they're still running it and they're very happy with it uh, after all. But this, this needs of course to be regulated, but I don't think, I don't think any vendor can go into such uh, a contract where uh, if the contract is stopped, everything will, will stop. But, uh, yeah. but as I said, we, we, we also, uh, as we mentioned in the, uh, we also are thinking about maybe open sourcing some of the components used here. Uh, so that, that is something that could, could, could be an option as well, because we are using it for internal use, so it could be a possibility, but that, that's not uh, a promise uh now because but we are looking into how we can handle this uh to, to scale it up uh abac uh, so we don't support abac in the uh, cdr open hr cdr um there were some questions of course about the legal and regulatory aspects and uh, everything around that that's 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 a decision we made many years ago that to not not implement this kind of feature in this uh, open EHR CDR based on our experiences with the, the hospital system who actually takes care of it. We know how much work it is to actually handle all kind of regulatory aspects and these kind of things. So this is why the uh, open EHR and the CDR store is kind of a slave behind the whole system. Uh, so th this is this is actually how how it's how it's done, uh, and we have no plans right yet in uh, to to implement uh, any of those um, those functions for access control and legal and regulatory aspects into the CDR. No, uh, we the experience we we have no plans to, to add that directly into the CDR, but we do uh, have some. Uh, in order to support this uh, kind of functionality on the outside, there are some, uh, some mandatory uh, metadata we, that, that we require in order to, uh, to allow compositions to be stored in our CDR, which are some key attributes used later on when it comes to access control. 
So just a follow-up question on, on that. So can you extract that functionality from your client, have like an API gateway or some other type of component where we can run the, these type of things separately, even though it's not built into the CDR? Or is it like completely nested into the application? Uh, um, the, I, th I think that's that would be a hard thing to do to, to extract our access control from our Dips Arena platform. Uh, maybe part of it, uh, some part that, that are, as you say, sort of like attribute based access control, but we also support what's called uh, uh, what's a good term in, in English, but uh, uh, Need up innovation, and maybe we can translate it together. Either yeah. from Swedish or Norwegian. Yeah, <laughs> uh, sort of like uh, uh, contextual-based uh, access control, where you, where you can uh, request access for something uh, based on the. If you have an acute patient, you can uh, request access for for some uh, for the information for this patient, and uh, that there. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure how uh, how easy that would be. But this 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 will this will very much depend on how you intend to use the CDR. Uh, what kind of deployment that there should be? Of course, mm -hmm. we have uh, experiences uh, deploying to uh, hospitals in Norway, and they also have. Um, uh, integrated their uh, installations into regional ones. So there are lots of rules depending on on, uh, on uh, everything around uh, laws, regulations, setups, and that kind of things to actually be able to handle that. Uh, but th there could, of course, be more 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 simple uh, deployment scenarios where where more simple rules are um, will be enough. And then that kind of things could be added more into. Um, you know, small clients or something like that around the CDR. So that that's that's that would be possible. Uh, but I think for us, we, you know, as I said, we have this long-term experience with integrating OpenEHR in a very 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 complex uh, installation, uh, serving the biggest hospital in in Norway and that kind of things. So we could t bring that experience in to new customers and and kind of uh, look into how to to do it. But for now, that will not be you know. That, that would not be something that we can do actually to just uh, take it out and install it uh, somewhere. So I can also just comment also what and another reason why we've, we've chosen to to keep this uh, access control on the outside is also for, uh, for performance use uh, for, for performance. Uh, uh, we have done uh, many attempts to to add some sort of integrated uh, access control, but we've uh, seen many times that it will degenerate the performance for the end users, and that the, uh, currently the best approach is to you to do either a, a, a pre-filtering of access control and then querying based based on a, a certain set of scoped scope, for instance, a set of patients that you know the user has access to or, or a post query filtering. Yeah. So yes. Uh, how independent the CDR and tools are from the DIPS EHR system uh, and um, and as, as such as I said, it's it's completely independent. Uh, the CDR can be run completely uh, isolated from the the um, from Deeps Arena and the Deeps EHR system, and also the tooling is uh, developed to to be used uh, outside. Uh, still, most I might not I, I think most of the time in our open EHR journey has actually been to integrate open EHR with the legacy system. 
to make the uh, you know the the data synchronized in an asynchronous way. Uh, the legacy system in some data structures doesn't have this uh, this versioning uh, system, so we need a way to handle that and and so on to actually then to be able to integrate it. That's that's been kind of a complex uh, material, but still it's it's totally independent. Uh, but uh, there hasn't been we haven't focused on selling or providing these uh, CDRN tools outside the DIPS EHR system. We have had our, our focus on actually developing DIPS Arena and to know it's uh, deployed all over Norway. The, the last uh, region, Helsingfors, uh, in the southeast part of Norway, is currently uh, de deploying DIPS Arena. The other regions are on. And, and now we kind of see that the features in OpenEHR are more or less uh, well, I should never say complete, but but it supports the needs that we face. So, and it's quite quite major. So that's why it's kind of interesting also to look outside of secondary use of what we have have developed, because now we see that everything is kind of working. Uh, there was some uh, research program in Helsingfors, uh, Snow, uh, they called it, which where they installed our CDR as part of a package on the GP offices. So they extract the data from the GP's offices and uh, stored it into our CDR uh, box and then deployed it uh, for um, you know, population management about infections and diseases. So we worked uh, together with them somehow to make it, it run on such a box with uh, another database, uh, so that that's that's possible. We know it's possible, but uh, we don't uh, do it that much. Uh, product package released and used by any customers than the three regions using this. No, so it's currently uh, what we have demonstrated and shown is is used within the DIPS EHR system. So the other the regions and there are some private hospitals who are using it. And as I said, this has been our main focus for the last uh, 10 years to make that uh, work. And uh, no, no, it might be the, uh, the time to look uh, outside for all the use of it. Um, there was a question number 10, which arrived when we started uh, this uh, session. Uh, elaborate the flexibility and security of the mentioned external internal APIs. Configure parameters or position support. Different uses of systems. It's a quite uh, open and the questions. Shetir uh, or Magne, do you have any? Uh, yes. So uh, currently, our CDR only. Uh, uh, functions as an internal API. Uh, we do not be the, uh, that way we, the, um, uh, we secure our uh, CDR uh, to only allow internal uh, calls to our APIs. For um, uh, external access, we, we the normal, most cases we support the uh, fire APIs that uh, we use as external APIs, which is then secured by traditional Oath to op OpenID Connect, uh, which then uh, sort of acts like a proxy into our internal APIs. So uh, our CDR has only uh, only at the function as internal APIs. I'm not sure if that answered the question, but uh... it was from uh, Pia, so you might uh, have some follow up uh, on that. Yes, okay. Um, do you have something about security? Security in these internal APIs. Uh, do you know that? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, currently, uh, um, uh, our CDR runs within the uh, and uh, Kubernetes cluster, and within that, 
the cluster, it's uh, we add security into the uh, ingress of the into the the uh, uh, the cluster, and then we for for allowing calls from outside our cluster, we use uh, certificate based security. We validate some the certificates with yeah in the uh, 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 Kubernetes ingress. Okay, and the normal logging and yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So if I rephrase some of the questions and combine them, is uh, uh, if we would make a, a call trying to buy something from you after the summer, what would we get? So we could get the CDR, right, and the tools. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to run that uh, for real, then we need to put something. This is to all of you. Uh, in front of it, if you want to protect it, we do our own ABAC thing uh, before and filtering what gets to access the CDR. And if you use your forms, we need to do something similar with that, who gets to access the forms. Is that your story? If we want to buy something after the summer, then we would do that mm. part ourselves and use your things as internal pieces. Mm. Yeah. Mm? OK. So given that you were in such a rush, uh, Eric, I would, uh, and, and we were the only uh, <laughs> provider. I, uh, so uh, then, of course, you, you would install and set up the uh, EHR store. You will, will uh, get access to the, the kind of the, the tooling with the form designer and uh, everything around that. And you will get access to all then the services providing these population queries and so on. You can build uh, applications. and. Depending on your client needs, you could have the VPF uh, render to integrate into some uh, kind of desktop uh, interface, or you will have the web-based form render, which you integrate into your applications developing whatever you, you, you would like to. So uh, that, that would be kind of possible to, to get up and running to, I think, uh, then after summer and during the autumn to get some experiences on that. Yeah, this is just trying to push a little bit but what you're actually selling and not you, you've done a very nice work in renovating dips uh, internally mm -hmm. the system of course but okay it sounds like some things are useful by themselves and we need to add some stuff ourselves great thanks mm -hmm. Are there more questions? Who would you like to proceed? Did you have more things that you would like to show or tell? Uh, I'm sure it could be uh, that uh, you would like to have uh, a look into some of pa some parts of the uh, demonstrations that we gave. Some were kind of quick and, and we rushed through it. It could be that. So some could be of interest to, to look into. Why not? Like the form designer or the uh, aircraft studio or... Uh... Perhaps a little bit under the hood in one of the decision support things you were showing. How would you yes. tweak things? Or yes. how would an, a developer or mm. super user work? So maybe, uh, Morten, maybe you could... Uh... You bring bring back uh, studio and look into some of the vacuums uh, providing data from the acute board or the f fall risk or uh, nutrition part. Yes. Okay. Okay, so on our left side here, uh, we have all the forms that uh, is a part of uh, our Qt Lista. Uh, and uh, if we press here, we get the vacuums that follow this. Uh, and uh, if we focus on the triage part for now, 
uh, this is the AQL that finds all of the AQLs we have that we need. Uh, so just in short, the first one here uh, gets or collects the triage score. And I'll go can go into a bit of detail afterwards. This one uh, checks the patient as an inspection. That's uh, what I call also the, the doctor when he has reviewed the patient or not. And the, here we have both the doctor and the nurse. Uh, so you can you can just uh, stop a bit there, Martin. For, yeah. for one of, one of them, just uh, pick, yeah. for instance. Yeah, this one. That's, that doesn't matter. So, Wakeum. Uh, it's a very strange name. You just had to make an acronym, which were easy to remember. But it's it's about stored queries. So we had this initial solution where we actually stored AQLs uh, on the server with some parameters. But we saw that we had more needs than that actually to, to make them more dynamically available and also do formatting. So this is the user, uh, the very simple user interface above it. So it's, it's all about define, defining the, the base AQL, which you will, uh, will use. And then you have uh, different parts within, within the, um, that, that the base AQL. And then you can define different uh, where uh, definitions and different ordering definitions. Uh, and this could be used then to you know, dynamically uh, provide different uh, views, if you like, into OpenEHR data. And then you have this, the, the predicates, which is the actually the, the, the actual run uh, AQL. So if you just uh, click on the uh, the play button there, you will see how this kind of works. So you will here get an auto-generated uh, AQL. This is actually what is done then on the server server side. Uh, so it expanded and then you do the query and get things back. Uh, so this is this is kind of that's kind of the idea here. So if you go back to the uh, the, the vacuum definition. Uh, yeah. So then you have all the, the predicates. So each predicate here define then a, a view into the data. And, and this could be then used again as uh, uh, access control on uh, OpenEHR data. If you, if you only provide the predicates to the outside and not, not, the, not be able to run AQLs because then you need to you know, analyze them to see what you're actually acquiring for, but then you can provide the predicate and then say that these or these user, user groups can have access to this predicate. So that's the, that's the AQL binding. So that's all about how to collect data from the OpenEHR uh, store, CDR. So, and, and then we were when I'm working on these uh, patients, patient list things where you wanted to combine data and provide some, um, as you said, Eric, uh, decision support, you want some colors and that kind of thing. And this is what the data elements is about. So you can then define different data elements and define how you want the results set from the uh, OpenEHR backend to be uh, displayed. Uh, and what uh, Morten brings up here is then you have this reasoning format in Norwegian, it's display format, and you can see a very, very complex uh, uh, sequence of characters, because here we are using the same calculation engine that we also have within the form renders to do Excel-based things with the data. So it looks very ugly and it's kind of is ugly, but it's very, very compact to make them uh, uh, rules on, on data. So here you can define different uh, uh, displays on the data and you can define the ordering. And you also have, as you saw there, Morten, you have the X format and the Y format. And this is also used to define time sets of data. We didn't demonstrate that, but if you want have some charting solutions for, for instance, and the height and weight, you can then define the X and Y formats, which, which path is the height and which part is the time, and then you can display charge of the same data. And then uh, finally, you have the formatting expressions, which is, which is used for uh, decision support to display uh, different colors. And you can maybe walk through what's on the screen here, Martin. Yeah, so what we see here is basically this is an easy might be read, but, uh, it's just 
we're checking the triage score that we collected from, uh, actually, I'll just run it. Uh, we press the triage score here. Let's get a result set. So uh, we first run this AQL, and here we see the context start time of the documents. So we can order it from newest uh, to oldest. And then we have here the system that's been used and set by the hospital, RETS or Manchester triage system, because that, again, can uh, affect how we show the data in the data element. So I'll show you quick that. And here we have the code that has been set. And here we use the code like one, two, three, four, five. There's a zero here, but that's been changed. So it's one, four, two, three, four, five. And that represents red, green, yeah, and so on. And this is the defined uh, parameter for the waiting time that has been set. Uh, that can also be adjusted by the, in the, our admin user face, but it's also set in the structured data. Uh, how long you are allowed to wait uh, given the time that's been set here. And if we go back to the uh, uh, data element, the triage here, uh, if I'll just quickly up here, uh, you'll see here, for example, in this part of it, we check if it's a Manchester triage system, which has been used. Because if it is Manchester triage, which is uh, defining the triage, we want our column to show a timer that counts down. But if it's a RETS triage, for example, that's been used, we don't want a timer that counts down because they can have uh, no definition on time. Uh, so we want it just to count up from when you were triaged. And if you look down here, you see the format expressions and it's pro probably quite easy to read. And that this just checks if it's one, if the triage score is one equals one, and then we show the red color. If it's not, then we don't show that and so on and so on down here. And if we go further down here, if we can't find, for example here, if we can't find any triage score or any pre-hospital triage, then it says that triage has not been done on this patient. If we find the triage score, uh, yeah, that's for example, uh, the triage score is zero, but we find a pre-hospital triage as red, then it's set as a pre-hospital score as red. So this is mutual excluding each other. So you get the right, uh, right definition. On the bottom here, I don't know if it's important or not, but yeah, here- I can uh, say something about that as well, because um, we also found that, you know, how can you, given that you did run some kind of query here, give to get the triage. Uh, and now I want to do a triage myself in the application. So what, which form should I use? So, uh, so this is why we invented this kind of a, the idea of a, a concept. So uh, behind, so here, here is a definition of then a concept for the uh, triage, which will then be looked up by the backend to select the correct form and also more metadata to be able to run in the system. But, but so here you have the combination about defining uh, the, uh, the data set, defining the, the formats, uh, display formats, and also define what should I do if I want to, uh, to add more data uh, of the same thing? And, and also what's kind of important here is that with Wacom, you, you will be able to join uh, multiple result sets from the CDR into one uh, final column. Mm. So you can do operations on, on different, uh, different uh, queries uh, within the same scope then, of course. Mm. So, and this, this uh, wake you mentioned will use um, AQL in the end, but uh, to make, you know, population thing, combining things, you need to be able to do this partitioning, uh, uh, the, the partitioning feature, which is needed to group the data into uh, to clusters and do operations on them. I think there's another question as well. Uh, sorry. Uh, where is it? Um, Can you say something about uh, task planning support? You said in your RFI answer that it is not supported in your system and it's not part of the roadmap. Or yeah. something like task planning, if you have similar things going on. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. Just some kind of support for processes. 
it's it's more or less uh, the same thing that stood in the document. So uh, we we um, implemented task planning, uh, and we also were close with uh, OpenEHR and Better actually uh, creating the initial uh, spec about it, and we implemented it into the system. Uh, but uh, we stopped the uh, implementation. So uh, we are right now working on a, a wow. project with it. You stop it. Well, um, you know, the purpose for us was to integrate it into the uh, the end system, and we found that it was kind of hard to uh, connect the other parts of the systems, like uh, the, the the scheduling system, the resource uh, planning part, lab radiology, and and uh, all the things. Uh, so we needed to rethink how to integrate task planning features within the whole system. So uh, and we and, and also about prioritizing. So we had to focus on uh, on uh, making Arena a great solution. So, but if we buy something from you, do we get some kind of hints about how to do some kind of process support, or is that all built into the Arena system? So the, you know, the, the, the process support that we do today is, uh, as, as Martin demonstrated, there are lots of process support in this the word list and that kind of things. And that's based on Wacom and this kind of definition. So it's kind of hidden here, uh, the, uh, the, the, the state of different processes uh, hidden. It, it's, it's part of the, uh, the Wacom to define state of a specific scope, and then you can provide uh, uh, this kind of um, uh, decision process report to the user. Hmm. Thanks. So, but uh, of course, uh, task planning, the idea of task planning is to provide, you know, the, the more uh, the process related um, visual flow about uh, you know states and how things will, will will run through so i, I think continue that with the, about the same question but regarding gdl which you answered in in yeah, uh, GDL. Way. Yeah, that's kind of uh, interesting because we had an implementation of GDL and we actually had it running within Dips Arena, but uh, that was GDL one before uh, they started on the two. Uh, but for GDL, we found that it was kind of hard to address the scoping of the queries generated. So our implementations uh, passed the GDL def def definitions and we generated the, the query and stuff uh, on the fly and we did what was expected there. But it didn't suit our needs to be able to define the scope of the queries. And this is actually which led us, what led us to uh, what is now Wacom to be able to define them different AQLs to define the data sets to get to put in to the GDL. So actually for GDL part, we can do more or less uh, the same with, with Wacom as GDL. So uh, what, what you are missing kind of uh, with Wacom here is that GDL has the possibility as archetypes to you know, be translated and it's more transparent about the rules. Uh, so, but but for the runtime situation, we had to have more control of the scope uh, of the solution, and it was it's one thing that we didn't uh, mention. I'm not sure if you have Arena up and running, Martin. If you do, just go to patient list admin. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh... So it was uh, all about this uh, scope uh, thing because that's uh, due to ad admin. Yeah. So, you know, uh, doing inquiries. So you have the idea of the EHR within a uh, CDR. So you can query the, the patient, the EHR. 
but uh, you can just pick any uh, any list with some uh, vacuum definitions. Uh, allergen immune therapy is fine, uh, Martin. That's that's good. That's good. Uh, any, anyway, it doesn't matter. Just pick one and and just uh, go to the uh, the definition uh, of the column. So here you can select the columns and and just pick the first one, trixoid, or or use that's fine. Um, so you can go down here to 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 pick the um, the scope. Yes, so here uh, at the bottom here, you have the scope. Uh, and as I said, you can of course query for the, the last news in the EHR that could be of interest, but for much of the data uh, in, in our system, you, you want to know, are there any news to uh, scored in this um, contact, in this episode of care, in this old patient clinic? So we need to scope the data uh, more precisely for some of the use cases. So here we have, you know, scopes defined by the surrounding system, this uh, EHR. But in the end, this is translated into tag-based queries in the CDR. So this kind of, you know, scoping, contextual scoping of the data uh, can, can be used in, in any application using our CDR backend supporting tags, which is now also part of the OpenEHR specification. And this is very important to make it possible to, you know, to, to scope the data in some contextual uh, scope, like episode of cares uh, and uh, referral periods and, and so on. So th this, is, this is very important for our system to be able to define, you know, if, there ha if someone have uh, entered, collected some specific data, today on this outpatient clinic and so on. Uh, 11. Yeah, that was the task planning support and, uh, and number 12 GDL, which I call for him. More questions? It's half holiday in Sweden today, so maybe people <laughs> just want to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess so. The national day tomorrow. Hmm. Is there any, anything you would like to add from this side? I think we have said too much uh, already. Um, anyone else? No. no, I think we have said, said it much. So uh, I, I think um, the the main the main uh, thing to say here is that uh, Open EHR suits the needs for clinical applications uh, well, and uh, we have integrated well with uh, the DIPS uh, EHR as we as it's running today at the uh, health regions in in Norway. And, and the, the components and the services are uh, you kind of developed to be able to run outside, but we haven't so far had the focus on actually doing that. Uh, and, but that, that may change in the, in the future. But, uh, but for now, I think uh, it was okay to give you some, some idea about how we use it within uh, DIPS Arena, DIPS uh, EHR uh, in, in a big hospital system and that you can see that it's actually suitable for that uh, that use case also uh, yeah it, it was really interesting to see I've, I've seen this before but it was quite a long time ago so it, it has happened a lot um and but i think we can perhaps end this meeting then if no one it be, it's one thing, but I don't have time to go into the details about that. But uh, uh, are, is you, are you sharing, Morten? If I can just share in the in the end, we said something about the, the package manager uh, solution. I'll just uh, give you a, a quick look uh, at screen two. Yes. So. Um, so uh, I would just give the uh, terminal-based uh, solution now. So we have a package manager. It's a, it's a client uh, tool, uh, which we use then 
to be able to package together all the dependencies of an open ESR based uh, solution. So here is for this uh, uh, RFE demo uh, area, we have some archetypes, some templates, some forms, and, and also some, some vacuums. And I didn't know the status, and uh, this, is, this is new for you, but this is the list of the resources available. And here you can see uh, what I have locally on my computer. And this is also what's then deployed on the feeds internally in DIPS. And I can also here see, uh, you know, for release, that's, that's what gets released into productions. So this will be available at the customer portal where a customer can then download or integrate into their own package, you know, uh, feed system. Uh, so, and this is what we are used to everything, every configuration, every form, uh, every vacuum is checked into Git as a version control system and it's, it's uh, published, uh, pushed, and then it's, it's built on a build server and then packaged together as a complete package. So this was kind of needed to be able to support the needs for you know, different deployments, north, west, southeast, and so on. And we could have then control of the versioning and so on. And you also have some utility function here to get then the, the graph of the uh, solution. So you can see then the dependencies. You have this form using this operational template, using these archetypes and, and so on. So this, has, this uh, when we kind of, um, release package manager that's kind of changed the way we, we work with uh, open EHR resources in large scale so that that's been very uh, interesting uh, to uh, to develop and then no no use well i think it's less than one minute left so uh, i think we we'll say thank you very much for this presentation and we'll stop the recording